Welcome to our cornfield drawing, painting, I should say, day one. Today we are going to draw out our cornfield with multiple layers of depth, which we will talk about here in a second. And we're gonna do some just base coloring with our paints today to allow to dry for next class to color over top of. This is a really fun project. Kids really enjoy it. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. This is a example of a finished one. Yours might look similar to this or kind of a little different. The first thing that you are going to do is we are going to draw our scarecrow. So quickly, when we are talking about depth, as things move further away from the viewer, Details get less. <clears throat> they lose the intensity of their color, depending on the atmosphere. Um, and they get smaller. So this area right up front, I'm the viewer and I'm standing right here. Okay. Items that are <coughs> right up front in our landscape drawing are going to have lots of detail. We're gonna have very bright color and they're going to be large. This is called the foreground. So that is at the bottom, move that up some, at the bottom of our paper, the foreground. The area in between the foreground and what is furthest away from the viewer is called the midground. Makes sense, right? Middle ground, the midground. That has some detail, um, still has color, but items are, objects are getting smaller, obviously, than they were at the foreground because they're further away. Then you move way further back and you have the background. If you look at the proportion of our scarecrow here, he's much bigger than our barn. But we know in real life, the barn is much bigger than a scarecrow. Because the barn is further away, it is smaller. It doesn't have a whole ton of detail. Like you can't see if there's cracks in the barn or, you know, berries on the bushes or anything like that. You can just see the overall shape without a lot of detail. You get less um, variations of color. A lot of times it gets darker as you move further away. So we are going to draw our landscape portrait style today. What do you mean portrait style? So when our paper, when our paper is up and down, this is called portrait style. Typically a portrait is a picture of a person, right? Typically you would have a head and shoulders and all that good stuff. Landscape style is when your paper is sideways. You are not going to be drawing sideways today because we want to get the different levels of atmospheric depth on our paper. So we are going to start in the foreground at the bottom of the paper here with our scarecrow. Papers are tall. And this is as far back as my camera will go. So I'm kinda, do you have a question? Yes, you are going to be drawing along with me. Good question. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask. Yep. Okay. First things first. We are going to put in our scarecrow. We don't want our scarecrow to go above mid paper. So let's go ahead and start with the head. I'm going to do not a full circle, but like a half circle around center on my paper. It doesn't have to be smack dab in the center. It could be on this side or this side, wherever you want it. And on top of that, we are going to put a straight line for the brim of the hat. Two lines coming up, two lines over. And a square on top. Square-ish, I should say, on top. <coughs> Gina, go get a drink. Um, 
So that's our scarecrow head. Let's go ahead and put some arms on so we know that a scarecrow typically has those pulls coming across. So we're gonna go straight across like so. I'm gonna move in just slightly and draw two lines down for the cuff of his sleeve. Two lines over. And the torso of my scarecrow. And we'll do something with this here in a moment. My pants then are gonna come out from the shirt. Two horizontal lines for the cuff of the pants. And almost like a V for the inseam of the legs. Scarecrows are typically stuffed with hay. We know that they're on a post, so let's put that post in there. I'm gonna go ahead and extend this just a little bit, and I'm gonna make a long, skinny rectangle there. And I'm also going to make a long, skinny rectangle here because my scarecrow is gonna be posted in my cornfield. And let's stuff it with hay. Zigzag, jagged lines coming out of the arms, coming out of the bottom of my pants. I'm gonna give it some jagged hair. And let's put a face on this guy. Two black eyes, filled all men. I'm gonna give him a pretty big triangular nose. Two really big circle cheeks, a smile, whoa, and I'm going to stitch his mouth. And let's give some detail. Are we good over here? Give some detail. I'm gonna go ahead and just like put a brim on his hat. I'm gonna put a couple patches on his shirt, which is a square and two lines coming out, maybe one on his pants. Can you put stars on him? All right, so we have our scarecrow right now protecting nothing. We need to put a cornfield behind them. So I'm going to do an arched curve here for my foreground. Ready? Watch first, then draw. I'm going to pick up my marker where it crosses the scarecrow for my first foreground. And then we're going to draw this in perspective like we are looking this way kind of like the top of a pumpkin how the center is an elongated oval and then it's the orange slices on each side we're going to do the same thing here so in the center i'm going to do my elongated oval not cutting off not coming to a point at the bottom because this is gonna keep flowing outward. And then I'm gonna do orange slices over here. You will have a little bit of overlapping of your lines, which is fine. Okay. So I have my foreground. Now I'm going to put in my first level of 
mid ground. And I'm going to once again draw a hill and it's gonna go behind my scarecrow. Yours might be slightly different than mine and if it is, that's perfectly okay. <coughs> Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my next, and this is gonna be kind of the hill in which the barn is on. And it's going to come down like so. And we're gonna go ahead and draw our barn before we continue on with the background. <clears throat> I'm gonna slide my paper down a little bit. And my barn, two vertical lines going straight up and down. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that off by drawing a horizontal line. On top of that, I am going to put a triangle that extends past my vertical lines. Not super far, but some. And I'm going to go ahead and make that have some depth by drawing another triangle right above it. This is gonna be our roof. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put my barn doors in. So almost to the edge of my barn, I'm gonna draw more vertical lines horizontal line. Let's give that some depth by doing, repeating that inside. Boop. I'm going to draw a diagonal line with some thickness, so a double line. And then behind that, another double line diagonal, but make sure that you don't pick up your marker when you run into the first diagonal. And I'm gonna put a little chicken coop in here, two lines straight down, kind of like you're doing a cut off rectangle. Two more vertical lines and these are the shutters. Well, it's not, a, I'm sorry, not a chicken coop. It would be like where they keep um, the extra hay and Thank you, a hayloft, thank you. All right, next we are going to draw the silo, which is a very long. And, and, it don't, and it doesn't hold popcorn. It doesn't hold popcorn, nope. A very long vertical line. right beside the barn and I put another little one right beside it because I'm going to draw my horizontal line and a half circle on top. And we can do a ladder if you like. I don't want it to go all the way down, but two vertical lines, horizontal lines to give the impression that there is a ladder there. While we're at it, this is a fancy barn. We're gonna put just some shrubs right there. And we have to have a way to get to the barn, right? So right from the outside or the inside of your barn door, you're gonna draw a line off the paper. It is slightly, not a ton, but slightly thicker here than it is here. And I want to enclose some of this farm so that my animals don't get out. I'm going to go ahead and put in a fence. Ready? Small pickets while we are further away and the pickets are going to get larger as we get closer. So I'm going to just a little, little line. They're going to be closer together too as they are further away and they are going to get slightly larger and spread out a little bit more and a little bit more until eventually, oh, I'm gonna start adding some thickness. <coughs> now these are pickets, not telephone poles, right? 
And this one's gonna get cut off by this level of land and I probably won't, maybe I see like that much of another one. And I'm going to put in the rails between, so two lines connecting them. Boom, 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 boom. And notice how close together they are when they're in the distance and as they are getting <coughs> Closer to the viewer, they're being spread out more. We're gonna plant a crop over here, I think, but for the time being, let's finish up our background. So we have the hill that the barn is sitting on. Let's go ahead and put in our last level of um, field. I'm gonna go behind the barn, and this one I'm not gonna make such a hill because fields are kind of a little bit more flat. And I'm gonna come up like this. And behind that, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the impression of trees or shrubs or bushes or, bushes or something in the distance to give the impression of Trees in the distance. Ta da! All right. Now, I said these are fields, right? Mm -hmm. We did the lines here for our <laughs> cornfield. They're kind of spread apart, they're pretty wide. This next level in our mid ground is going to get closer together. You can go this way, this way, <coughs> this way with your lines. Pick a direction and go with it. And you're going to make them a little bit closer together. Filling that whole area. Now we said that this was gonna be grass here because they have to get up to the barn, but this is a field. <coughs> Whichever direction you went here, you wanna make sure you go an opposite direction for this field. So I'm gonna go this way. And my lines are definitely going to be much closer together this time. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Like you notice I'm not even worried about all my lines going to the um, fence. I'm just kind of putting them in there. <coughs> and last but not least, we said this is a field up here too, right? So really wide lines, a little bit closer together, a little bit closer together. These are going to be close. And I am not... worried about them filling the whole thing. Like, I drew that line all the way down here. I'm not even worried about it up there. I'm just going to. Like like We're gonna fill this in with a lots of color with our markers next time. So just put some lines close together and call it a day there. Then you are going to cap your shark bee. I'm going to show you the painting part so that you guys know what to do. Um, so <laughs> let me grab some scratch paper. I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna cut you loose. All right, when we are painting, we know this from numerous projects in the past. We start with the, where do we start? Bottom. Top to bottom, big to small back, I should say far to near. So just so happens our furthest area, our largest area, and our um, top area is our sky. So since we woke up our temper paint cakes, we have used these in the past. That's just temper paint that is pushed and squished into a cake. We are also going to be using these super big <coughs> Paint brushes because we are blocking in large areas of color today. That's a wall. Yep. So 
And this does not have to be perfect. We're gonna do some color bleeding or double loading of our paintbrush for our sky. I am going to do a little bit of this pink color and a little bit of this blue color. And ooh, okay. I have a very purple sky. Oh, Mrs. Chernel, I went into my bushes. Uh, not a big deal. And I went into my barn also, not a big deal. Because next class, we're gonna be putting in our details with marker. And I'm just kind of color bleeding some of this blue into the sky. Cause it was a little bit too pink, though it was beautiful. I don't want a completely pink sky. Next, we are going to definitely paint this area behind the scarecrow. And since we didn't put crops there, I'm gonna say that that you're probably going to want to have be <laughs> green. Can you put green and brown in there? Sure. Could you put green and yellow in there? Yes. I am just going to go ahead and paint it green. Now, I'm not intentionally trying to go into my scarecrow, but like I said, if I do, not a big deal. Um, depending on what different crops you have growing, I'm going to do some yellow, I think, back here. Maybe this is all corn. For this green area, I'm going to do where my green grass was. I'm gonna put my green in, but I'm also, since it's a crop, I'm going to add some brown in there and let it do some color bleeding. Slide my paper up. I think I'm gonna just do maybe brown in here. Well, you know. And down here, I think I'm going to do yellow. You will not be painting your scarecrow today. You will not be painting your barn. You will not be painting anything detailed. You are painting large chunks of your paper, your levels of fields, your sky. Okay, next class we will come in with the markers. And when we do that, it makes it really, really bright. Wow, that is bright. Yep. So when you are done with this, your water containers are going to go into sink one. Your tempera paint cake trays are going to be laid out on counter one. Your paintings. <clears throat> You're going to turn onto your scratch paper so that it's not so floppy and carry it to the drying rack and store it that way, okay? All right. <clears throat> 